Welcome to Vitality VIPs. Wellness Elite Channel. Let's start. Hi, I'm Dr. John who supports natural healing methods. Today I would like to briefly talk to you about a seemingly trivial matter, namely how to properly measure blood pressure and the most common mistakes we make during this process. Improper preparation for measuring blood pressure, as well as incorrect execution of the measurement, can significantly skew the final result. I think that the knowledge gained in this topic will allow at least some of you to save some stress and nerves, as basic mistakes usually result in obtaining too high blood pressure, which in reality may be normal, but due to incorrect measurement it will be inflated and may indicate hypertension. In this episode, I will also explain what the obtained result means. I invite you to watch. One of the basic mistakes made when measuring blood pressure is incorrect body posture. To ensure that blood pressure measurement is carried out correctly, you should sit with your back straight and supported, preferably using a regular chair for this purpose. I have often encountered situations where blood pressure was measured while sitting on a couch, and I do not consider this a good solution. Slightly hunched or unsupported back can give a result higher even by several units when it comes to systolic pressure. Additionally, it is worth remembering to keep your feet flat on the floor and not to cross your legs. I would also like to add at this point that crossing your legs may cause systolic blood pressure to be higher by 5 to 8 units, while diastolic blood pressure may be higher by 3 to 5 units. To ensure accurate measurement, the arm should be resting on a flat surface, such as a table. The result of blood pressure can also be affected by whether we have emptied our bladder before measuring. It is generally accepted that having a full bladder can result in an incorrect reading of blood pressure, which can be increased by even several units. Therefore, it is good to use the bathroom before measuring to empty the bladder. A common mistake that can give a false reading is keeping the arm at an incorrect height during measurement. Remember that the arm should rest at the height of the heart, and more precisely, the center of the cuff should be located at the level of the right atrium, or at the midpoint of the sternum. If the arm is below the level of the right atrium, the blood pressure reading will be inflated. By the way, if we use a wrist blood pressure monitor, the wrist should also be at heart level during reading. Additionally, it should be emphasized that the arm should be supported, otherwise, we unconsciously tense our muscles to hold the arm in a fixed position, which leads to an increase in blood pressure. As we know, many different factors affect the result of blood pressure, and unfortunately, we often forget about them when we measure blood pressure. While still quite a few people are aware that we should not consume beverages containing caffeine before measuring, it often happens that we do not refrain from smoking, which can disturb our result. Therefore, if we plan to measure our blood pressure, let's take at least a 30-minute break from consuming caffeine-containing drinks, alcoholic beverages, and smoking cigarettes. Additionally, let's remember that during this time, we should not engage in any physical activities. It is also good not to eat meals half an hour before measurement. Moreover, we perform measurements before taking medication. A relatively common mistake is also that we do not remain calm during measurement. The main thing I have in mind is that we often have conversations with a person in the same room or talk on the phone, which significantly affects the accuracy of the measurement. I also recommend that after assuming the correct sitting position, we wait for 3 to 5 minutes without speaking or moving before taking the first measurement. Another mistake when measuring blood pressure independently is that we only take one measurement at a time. In this case, we receive only one result, and it does not give us a complete assurance that the measurement was accurate. That is why I always recommend taking three measurements. It is also important to keep a two-minute break between individual measurements. With three measurements, we will have three results. If we notice that one of them significantly deviates from the other two, we should not rely on it and can reject it. However, from those measurements that are similar, we can calculate the average and consider it as the final result. I'll just make a small reminder. Click the button below and subscribe to our channel for more important and interesting information. Now back to the topic. I know that many people monitor their blood pressure daily. This applies mainly to people who struggle with hypertension or those who take selected medications. They keep a notebook with measurements from different days, and I often observe a particular mistake here. Namely, measurements are taken every day, but at different times of the day, and this aspect can also have some influence on the blood pressure readings. Therefore, I recommend measuring blood pressure at fixed times. For example, we take a measurement in the morning at 9 am and in the evening at 8 pm, and we stick to this principle every day. 
If we talk about cuff sphygmomanometers, a significant mistake is using such a device with an incorrectly sized cuff. We should know that the cuff should be appropriately matched to our arm circumference. So before purchasing a sphygmomanometer or before using it, we should measure our arm circumference accurately. It's important to note that selecting the right cuff size is particularly important for older adults, not only because an incorrect size can give a false reading, but also because as we age, our veins become calcified and weaker. As a result, an improperly fitted cuff can cause damage to blood vessels during the measurement. Additionally, the way the cuff is applied to the arm can also affect the blood pressure reading. According to guidelines, the cuff should be placed about 2 to 3 centimeters from the elbow crease and should not overlap with clothing. It's best to measure on a bare arm without rolling up sleeves, which can cause a tourniquet effect and give false results. It's also recommended to measure on the arm with the higher blood pressure and to always measure on the same arm. Some people only measure their blood pressure in the presence of a doctor. However, I do not consider it to be a good solution due to the so-called white coat effect, which means that the presence of a doctor in the office and contact with a doctor triggers a certain level of stress in us, resulting in an increase in blood pressure. Therefore, blood pressure measurements taken by a doctor may not be entirely reliable. That is why I believe it is worth investing in our own blood pressure monitor and taking regular measurements in the comfort of our own home, of course, while considering all the tips provided in this video. Now, let me briefly talk about the classification of arterial blood pressure. Let's start with the fact that blood pressure is expressed in two values. The first value, the higher one, is called systolic blood pressure. This is the pressure that occurs during the contraction of the left ventricle of the heart. The second value is called diastolic blood pressure. This is the pressure during the resting phase, that is, the pressure that occurs in the arteries between heartbeats when it relaxes. It is generally considered that normal systolic blood pressure should be below 120 units, that is, millimeters of mercury, and diastolic blood pressure should not exceed 80 units. When our systolic blood pressure is in the range of 120 to 129 units, and the diastolic blood pressure remains below 80 units, we then refer to it as elevated blood pressure. However, it should not be a cause for concern. Until recently, such blood pressure was considered normal. In the case when the blood pressure is higher than the values I have just mentioned, we refer to it as hypertension. However, there are two levels of hypertension that need to be distinguished. The first level occurs when the diastolic blood pressure is in the range of 130 to 139 units or when the diastolic pressure is between 80 to 89 units. The second level of hypertension is referred to when the systolic blood pressure is higher than 140 units or when the diastolic blood pressure is higher than 90 units. I believe it is worth regularly monitoring our blood pressure. If the first measurements show that it is normal, then subsequent measurements can be taken after a few months. However, if the blood pressure was elevated, it is a good idea to check it more often. This will allow us to control our health status and evaluate the effectiveness of the changes we have made to lower blood pressure. And let me just add that on my channel you will find a video in which I talk about natural methods of lowering blood pressure. I encourage you to watch it. It is also important to be aware that persistent high blood pressure, which we do nothing about, significantly affects our health. It can be the cause of atherosclerosis, heart failure, as well as heart attack and stroke. Furthermore, High blood pressure can lead to kidney damage and may contribute to memory problems, and even be a risk factor for developing dementia. Please believe me that such simple preventive actions as regular blood pressure measurements can really save us a lot of stress and worries in the future, so I encourage you to self-monitor. That's all for me for today. So, take care about yourself and yours diet. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and see you in next episode.